morning and welcome to your premier so this is inside politics and i'm very glad for the first time to be sitting on this round table with um an elite panel of gentlemen the one on my left <laughs> doesn't want to see me so much you know willis uh we have a history with willis so he doesn't want to see me this morning but i'm glad they're all here i've been introducing them shortly there's a lot that has been happening in the country in the last few months top is what's happening in the presidency is there a rift and if this rift exists what is the genesis of this rift and can they really find a solution this early in fact this is the first time we are being treated to such happenings within the presidency in uh, a very short duration there's a lot that is happening and people are not shy to speak like my friend gabriel Oguda would say <laughs> what what will gabriel say Things are boiling. Things nicely. are boiling nicely. The way the doctor yeah. yeah. <laughs> the fear is gone. The fear is gone. And, no and then he will say that uh, give uh, uh, Fred Okango my, <laughs> my malaria, malaria vaccine. Malaria vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> and you can give his grandmother's uh, cat, cat, cat Medusa uh -huh. uh, some milk. <laughs> I wonder what is boiling nicely. We'll be talking about that. My guest this morning, Willie Sotien, an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. Thank you so much, Wakili, for coming. That seat is empty. Javas Bigambo is a political and uh, policy analyst. He's also joining us shortly. Zach Kinuthia, you know him, former CAS, Asante Sana. Thank He's you. been avoiding my shows. I don't know how <laughs> <laughs> Jesse has been bringing him on the round table. And also my friend, friend of Okango. No, he worked with this guy in the media. I don't know how he crossed over. He's not, Politics he's became not, sweet. He's not a politician. He's now a politician. Yeah? <laughs> Suddenly, Tadwe Alliance, Kanu, now he's Azimio. Thank you so much we for coming. We will welcome him to Safina. Safina. Thank Safina. We will welcome him to Safina. We, we, you we, and Safis, Jimmy. Yes, so how is Jimmy doing? How is Jimmy doing right now? It's, good, it's, it's good. good. All right, before I come back to my guests and the newspaper headline, uh, King of These Guys. You don't need to uh, be told who the king of the sky is. The standard is telling you boldly this uh, Sunday morning. We'll be talking about that. But let's update you. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa took head on President Ruto's allies as the cracks within the presidency became apparent. Now Gashagwa, who retreated to his Mount Kenya backyard on Saturday, accused Ruto's allies of interfering with his service delivery. Now, the second in command brushed off his critics, making it clear that he will only take instructions from one and only person, the president, and of course you, Kenyans, who he says are his employers. Take a look. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa has for another time warned President William Ruto allies in a protracted fight within the ruling UDA party. Speaking on Saturday during his tour of central Kenya, where he addressed rallies in Kirinyaga and Nyeri counties, the DP accused Ruto's allies of interfering with his delivery of service to Kenyans. Even some people wana musaidia kazi, mapie yake, wana ataka tikuni amurisha mimi vile nitafanya kazi. Inaweza kana? Ata blogger ya president want to tell me what to do. The seemingly charged Gashagwa reiterated that he is only answerable to President William Ruto and Kenyans who voted for the Kenya Kwanza government. He said he will not take pecking orders from any other person. Mimi, muna nijua? Si muna nijua? Eh, hey, bozi yangu ni wangabi? Wanainchi wa Kenya na President William Ruto. Whatever the President has told me to do, I have done. And I will continue to do na kumweshimu na kuwa muaminifu kwake. Na regaze kachakwa achiliwe afanye kazi yake. Hakuna deputy president mwingine Kenya amefanya ile kazi inafanywa na huyu mzee. Kashagwa's remarks come at a time when there are speculations of a sharp division in the ruling party UDA with a section of leaders supporting DP Gashagwa in his quest for one man, one vote, one shilling revenue sharing formula and push to unite Mount Kenya region while the other faction is behind President William Ruto. Uendelea kusikiria rais wenye unamshikiria. Na tunajua pia kuna matunda inatokana. Watu wa Kilenyaga tunasemanga tuwezi tuwezi tupa ngombe inakamuliwa tupate ndama ambao haija za. Zingine ziko na mazoea kuharimbika matiti unakosa maziwa. Na wale viongozi muambia kina kemani ishungwa chuma chao ki motoni. Waambie chuma chao ki wapi? Gashagwa also castigated his critics poking holes at his pursuit for a truce with the retired president Uhuru Kenyatta. 
according to Gashagwa, he is determined to reconcile the Uhuru just like his boss made friends with Odium leader Odinga. Siku rais wetu ameona inafaa washikane na Raila Odinga. Mimi nikajiuliza kama kiongozi, nitakuwa mjinga kiasi gani kama yule Raila tulikuwa tunapiga uhuru juu yake wameshikana na rais wetu. Hata mimi nikasema uhuru ni wetu, ni mtoto wetu, aheshimiwe na tukae pamoja. Elsewhere, a section of leaders have stayed put in opposing the proposed formula by Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa. The leaders say the formula is unfair to communities in pastoral areas. Na tuatutaki rais aweke kwenye siyasa ya misingi ya ukabira. Malake kuna watu siku ya leo, wameaza kugawanya wa Kenya kwa misingi ya ukabira. Na hata siwa misingi ya kikabira peke yake, hata hapa mautikinya region wameaza kugawanisha watu. Ile ambayo inaendelea sasa katika taifa letu la Kenya ni ile tu tunazungushwa propaganda ya opposition lakini nataka niseme finance bill haita haikulenga kunyanyasa hasla kuna mahali ambapo tayari wana fedha za kutosha kwa sababu mimi constituency yangu peke yake ni kama county mbili ya wasingisho constituency yangu ni kama constituency 16 ya wasingisho Clement Masombo KTN News, Nyeri County. Very interesting indeed, and we'll be discussing that, putting it to perspective shortly with the best, the brightest minds on television this morning. King of the skies. Let me look at this headline. And gentlemen, you all have a, a copy of uh, the Sunday Standard today. The President Ruto has been in more countries than the number of months he has been in office, obvious. He travels like three times in a month. At 63, uh, 63 international travels in 21 months, flying president appears on course to set record uh, of the most uh, foreign trips made by sitting head of state, even as concerns rise over the travel costs. Kinuthia, Ulisema, how, how much money have we used in foreign travel? It is 12 billion uh, locally, Yes. 6 billion uh, abroad. 12 billion locally yes and 6 billion abroad yes 18 billion yes 18 billion is equitable share of which county more than more, uh, more than three counties more, more than, than three not, counties. not even three yeah yes. i think more than that mm. it's more than uh, 17 counties okay yeah mm. uh, isaac maura would argue willis that you know the good outweighs the no, cost no no isaac maura does not deserve a mention in Istanbul because you said he's a bright panel <laughs> I think it's important. I don't know what you mean. I forgot to, I forgot to introduce Elda, Javas Bigambo. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Guys. So, but I asked Willis. There's a reason I asked Willis and not Zach. You know, when Zach has spoken, yes. he's, he's the senior most uh, who was in the public office. Yes. Yes. So we'll defer to his cancer. But let me just say this. Mm. If you look at uh, Ruto's travels across the world, what is the benefit to the people of Kenya? As it were, you cannot even pinpoint any single thing. Mm -hmm. Last year, the hallowed travel was to Russia to get us fertilizer. Which fertilizer, they decided to put donkey shit and sell to farmers as subsidized uh, fertilizer. And our farmers are now going to witness a uh, very failed harvest mm -hmm. because of that. Today, Ruto was in Italy lambasting Russia uh, because now he's in the company of the U.S. and its allies. Mm -hmm. And yet last year it was Russia that was going to help our food production to be boosted. So whatever this man is doing abroad, no one knows what it is in for him. May I believe we are witnessing an uh, Alice in Disneyland, in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. He is leaving his boyhood dreams to travel the world and to see the Eiffel Tower and to see the, the, the Pisa in uh, Italy and to go and see the Grand Canyon in uh, the U.S. He is not doing anything that will benefit the people of Kenya. If it were, it is now more than 18 months since he came into office, and he has traveled more than 63 countries. Tell me which new market has he opened for Kenyan produce? Tell me which bilateral <coughs> agreement has he signed that has benefited Kenyans? When they went to America, they told us all the lofty things that they came up with. But where's the tangibles? What did we give the Americans in return? Uh, from what I hear in the grapevine, we may have given them rights to set up a military base here. We may have given them rights to expand the Manda Airbase. Uh, we are turning into a Guantanamo Bay. Uh, the next thing we saw was the Americans saying that uh, we are going to be used as the Houthis to fight the fight in Yemen with the Houthis. What interest do we have in Yemen? What have the Houthis done to us that we want to get into a global fight between them and the US? That is not our interest. So what Ruto is doing internationally 
is actually looking for trouble for Kenyans. Don't you think, Wakili, you are looking at this um, from a very extreme perspective? I mean, you can't um, reduce the travels of the president to just uh, fulfilling his desires. I mean, there must be a reason, even if it's one, the head of state is traveling on behalf of Kenya. It can't just be that. I agree. The sweetness of a pudding is in the eating. Mm -hmm. It's 18 months down the line. He's gone to over 63 countries. Just point out to me if the quality of life of the people of Kenya has improved okay. or regurgitated re since mm -hmm. I traveling across the world. Okay. What we all agree in Kenya is that our quality of life has deteriorated since William Ruto became president. Okay. And his foreign travels have not improved our lot. So the net effect of those travels, in my view, is that these are individual interests, member travels that are meant to achieve his own interests. Be it personal interest, be it boyhood dreams, we do not know. Okay. But it's not for the benefit of the people of Kenya. <laughs> Let me bring now Zach, Javas, and uh, Fred to this conversation. 63 trips. Uru Kenyatta in 10 years, um, 151. That's an average of 15 a year, yeah, right? Yeah. An average of 15 a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the late Moe Kibaki, 33 in 10 years. Mm -hmm. That's an average of three trips, right? Yeah. Let, me, let, let, let me bring you in. King mm -hmm. of the Skies, I just want us to dispense off with mm -hmm. this uh, headline. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a justification to this headline, mm -hmm. and are there benefits that we mm -hmm. cannot ignore because of these travels? Thank you, my brother. And, and uh, I want to apologize for having skipped your shows. You know, last election, uh, we escaped very injured because uh, <coughs> I lost my seat and we lost the presidency. So I had to take time before I can appear on, uh, on TV. And it's okay because what you are telling people is now becoming clear that uh, the current administration had no idea how to govern. It was a kakistocracy. The rulership by the least members of any society with no idea with no plan and without any goodwill even to know how things are done. That's why you see the members of cabinet today. Uh, once you mention them, you can only, you can only, you can only hold, hold your chin the way you are doing. Because of their history, their characters, their, you, you can tell. So the president's travel can only be about three things. One, seeking medical care. At least Ruta is not seeking medical care. The president can travel for work. That's what he's claiming. Or the president can travel for vacation. He hasn't traveled for vacation. So the travel he has made are travels about work ostensibly. And this is what he has said with his own uh, mouth. But an average of, uh, because this is 63 trips in, let's say, even two years. So that means every year he's traveling 38, uh, 35 times, 33 times. So 33 times every year means that he has traveled two count uh, three countries in every month, because that would be 39, 12 times 3, 36. He has traveled 11 <coughs> countries in every month. This is a question. When the president travels to which country and he's traveling for work, is his work for public good or is his work for regional good? Is it Kenyan job he's doing or is it African job he's going to do? Some of these trips he has claimed are on behalf of the African uh, countries, uh, on behalf of the Pan-Africanism. So what has Pan-Africanism gained by his travel? <coughs> what has the public gained by his travel? But it is uh, what Wakili, my, my senior uh, in the practice, uh, what has said that interest majority of us, that when the president goes out there, we should not spend so much energy and time trying to figure out what he has achieved for us. It should be rather obvious. It should be apparent. It should be apparent for uh, what we call uh, a reasonable bystander. A person who just passes on the street should be able to tell you that when Kibaki traveled to a certain country, he brought X. When Huru went to a certain country, he brought X. These things are not known. But let me stop uh, pass, um, uh, international, uh, broad, uh, broad travel and come local. President Ruto has spent 63, uh, rather 12 billion shillings to travel locally. Mm -hmm. So what is there to show for it locally? Because uh, when we say outside there, there may be a lot of uh, fuss. But here locally, he has gone to 39, uh, sorry, he has gone to 43 counties so far for work. But he has gone to almost every other county to, to visit. So what is there even to show for Muranga, for instance? <coughs> when he has gone to Muranga, what has there been to show? 
when he has gone to uh, Nyeri, the, the bastion of the deputy president, what has he there to do? He was in Eldoret. What has there been to do except politicking and mobilization of people towards supporting the government? The president has nothing to show. So when they call him the king of the skies, you Kenyan sky okay. is also included. So even the Kenyan sky has nothing to show for 12 it. Twelve billion. Yes. We have twelve billion to show for Fred. Ken. Uh, it's very interesting that um, Ruto travels a lot and there's nothing to show for it. In our viewers, as Emilio, we've always said that these travels are a waste of public resources. They do not reflect in the economic development of this country. The expenditure in travel do not promote equitable development for every Kenyan and therefore they're a waste of time. The only thing that Ruto shows when he travels, and uh, I pick when uh, he went to the U.S., is the family affection when he holds uh, Mama Rachel's hands. That display was very good. But other than that, beyond the family affection that he has shown, there's nothing to show for it. What do you if mean? Ruto came back with a basket of goodies from the U.S. Ken, the basket of goodies that. were promissory notes. If not implemented, they will not affect positively in any way. But the FBI director was here a week after the president came back. I mean, and, and he visited ESCC, DP, ODPP, and the rest. Uh -huh. Yes, and look, they gave around 651 let me tell you, million shillings let, let me, for the let me fight against you, corruption. Let me tell you, Ken, you can't just reduce it to the, the president. The fight against corruption, if the fight against corruption is a priority to President William Ruto, as he wants us to believe, Today, Mithika Linturi should not be in office. Mm. If the fight against corruption is a priority to Kenya Kwanzaa regime, as they want us to believe, the, the corruption in status, it must have started from there. We know for sure. Read the Auditor General report. It shows how money has been misappropriated. What are they doing about it? Bringing FBI and all those other people to fight corruption, bring money. The same money FBI will bring in here will be stolen again. So it is a corruption against corruption. What we are saying is, these travels by William Ruto are unnecessary. Look at the comparison. President Uhuru Mwige Kenyatta, 151 travels in 10 years. We used to see President Uhuru Kenyatta doing Zoom meetings from State House. What is stopping William Ruto, who has manifested himself as a promoter of digital we don't economy? Have COVID. What is he doing? We don't, we don't need COVID. COVID, COVID has taught COVID. us that we you don't need to travel to Europe to do a meeting. Mm. We don't need to have COVID to save. We don't need to have COVID to do meetings from your own country. We want to ask Mr. President, with all due respect, stop the travel, work for the people. They said in the uh, proposal by the people, the NADCO, you remember, that they respect the people's view that we should lower the number of travels, in fact, by 50%. When that report came out, William Ruto came out and said, in fact, he is already doing it. Reduce the delegation of travel, lower it by 50%, Reduced by 30% daily subsistence, what we call per diem. Mm. Let me tell you, he tells us that his friends fund his travel. Can you tell Kenyans who funded the travel to Italy? The other one was funded by his friends to the U.S. Who is funding the one in Italy? Who is funding the one he's going to travel next month? Because we are now aware that he hardly takes time in office. He hardly takes two, four weeks, I mean, four, four days in a week in, in Kenya. Mr. President, <laughs> this is not adding any value to the people of Kenya. In fact, what Mr. President is doing by traveling is allowing his people to undermine his own government while he's away. And that's why we see in his absence, okay. you see these fights. Okay. Uh, let's, <coughs> let me conclude with Elda on this. <coughs> uh, thanks, Ken. Very interesting discussion here we, we're presently having. And of course, facts must be truncated with the empiricism. <coughs> and regarding this idea of um, President <coughs> William Ruto's travels, as a matter of fact, of course, we know that president is a country's diplomat number one. And that, of course, justifies travels by any president. However, when you look at all these things, what should be important, as it's been uh, uh, indicated here, is conducting an audit of the beneficial outcome of these travels. And for instance, uh, from Kibaki's time, Uhuru's time, and uh, now President William Ruto's time. We have had lots of bilateral agreements signed for the country. What we have never done is to, beyond having an inventory, is conduct an audit of all these bilaterals and seeing to what extent have the implementation been affected and how Kenyans, 
for instance, have benefited. That should be the direction of a critical discussion of a country looking at or examining uh, the president's troubles or even ministers' troubles. We have not had a couple of other ministers travel. Professor Kindik has not traveled out of this country. We have had other ministers or CSS who have traveled. As a people, I think what we need to do is to examine the um, outcome, the benefit, and then we say, if we see the benefits uh, are there, then we say, it's OK, let the travels <coughs> take place. Of course, also, what is um, good is that the president has scaled up the country's profile with matters to do with climate change, et cetera. And I think, as, a, uh, as we all know, looking at matters drought, matters flooding, et cetera, not just here, Malawi, and everywhere else, I think we can say that that has been a good profile for us. And if at all we get to secure funds for Africa, for, for Kenya, on matters to do with the climate change uh, interventions, then we'll say it's been productive. And so in the end, I think as a people what we need to, to do is just to do a critical audit okay. and see how we are moving forward as a country with the benefits. Because I believe of indeed there must be something in there that is good for Kenyans, right? And we, we should not just bash the president for just traveling. There must be something good, Willis. There must be. But I, I'm going away from this topic. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something good. Yeah? Can, can, can you you're, you're, you're wearing a white shirt. <laughs> we can all see it. Yeah. We cannot argue over your white shirt. If there's anything good out of President Ruto's travels across the globe, we should be able to see it. I am yet to see. If there is anybody who has seen it, any Kenyan, mm. be it Kenya Kwanza, Azimio, Safina, Nanpati, <laughs> just <laughs> come out and tell us mm. these, are, these the are the benefits. Okay. Okay. Um, he's now doing the G7, but let's get back home. I'd like to ask if any of you think regarding Ashagwa has seen the light. <laughs> has he seen the light? The deputy president has been speaking and yesterday I think was a climax of uh, what he's wanted to say for so long. He was very dismissive of uh, the president's handlers. He was very dismissive of uh, a relationship that we think has been really, really cordial since the election. And he was very dismissive of the president's PAs. I don't know who are the PAs. And the bloggers. But, and bloggers. But do you think the deputy president has come of age? Ken, if I may start. First of all, I think uh, what the deputy president is doing is very good. It's good in the sense that he is almost reaching his destination. His destination is Damascus. And at this time, when he's midway Damascus, he has realized that actually he was not um, nominated to be in that position because he was merited. the most merited, but because he was the best, most preferred at that time in terms of his skills mm -hmm. to mobilize ethnic numbers. They have told him that regarding Ashagwa is mobilizing ethnic numbers around him to destabilize the government of President William Ruto. I don't agree. William Ruto chose Rigadi because of his ability to mobilize ethnic numbers. That's what he told us at Karen when he appeared for him, when he was president-elect. He told us that because he knew that in bringing Rigadi, he was going to achieve the composition of the executive by making it the reflection of ethnic diversity of the people of Kenya. Rigadi is an ethnic diversity with the people of Kenya. It's a reflection. So he cannot come through his people, Ichungwa, calling him, you know, a villager, to tell us that Rigadi is wrong and they're right. Number two, we have also seen, Rigadi says that he is not stupid and he's not very clever, but he knows something. Rigadi Gashagwa yesterday, on, when he was midway Damascus, he told the people of Kenya that he is going to work with Uhuru Kenyatta, in my view. I think the problem is Uhuru Kenyatta. Because if Rigadi says that he is going to work with Uhuru Kenyatta, that is what is angering the majority of the president's men. They feel that Rigadi Gashagwa used Uhuru Kenyatta as a bogeyman to win the election. They fought Uhuru and Rigadi confessed. You know, for you to be forgiven, you must first of all acknowledge the wrongs done. He acknowledged that they did the wrong thing. They insulted Uhuru. They called him names. They chased him away. Today is going back to the same Uhuru, our Azimio coalition chair, telling him that they are fighting me. Please, let's work together. And he has acknowledged Uhuru is the king. But interestingly, why this thing, I, in my view, I think is good. Regarding a shark,
is fighting them from within. But they are If your enemy is a friend, we want to welcome Regadi to continue doing what he's doing because whatever he's doing is fighting within that. In our view, mm -hmm. in our view, we believe that what we must know after they finish fighting, they must tell us that the border border that they promised that when they put the Bible down, we'll have Uber owns a Uber. The Mamamboga that they promised us that when they put a Bible down, we'll have a ghost. They that they promised us that when they put the Bible down, we'll now own a fleet of cars and Mkokotenis owns that. <laughs> that is not coming. And then lastly, regarding Ashagwa, if he is the truthful man as he has told us, today, this Sunday, he must go out and tell his lieutenants, his members of parliament, to reject the finance bill. That one we shall know that he has reached Damascus as the destination. Well, it's, you know, one thing I must say about regarding Ashagwa is that that fight that he has with Ruto, it's a personal fight. As Fred says, if Rigadi mm -hmm. Shago wants to fight with Ruto, the opening remarks should be, I reject this excessive taxation of the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. We are fighting on a people's agenda. Mm -hmm. That's the disagreement. <laughs> As it is, when I watched Rigadi speak yesterday, he went on a rant against <clears throat> Ruto's handlers, tried to justify it that I was misled <coughs> not to work with Raila because Raila spoiled to Uru. Now the same Raila. He signed still to make it about Raila. I mean, I would even advise Azimio members, such kind of a character, if he is being impeached, he should be impeached. <laughs> <laughs> he should not support such a person. <coughs> because Rigadi has uh, styled his politics <coughs> around trying to make Raila the head figure yeah. of our <coughs> politics in this country. And the net effect of that has been, we end up having a good majority of Kenyans voting on fear, mm -hmm. on phobia, as opposed to voting on issues. And that is how Kenya Kwanza managed to get the kind of support that it did in the last election, even though they stole <coughs> part of it. They were able to manipulate people's emotions using Raila as a scarecrow to whip up ethnic numbers. And I watched him trying to do the same yesterday. Yeah. That's dangerous politics. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's entitled to play his politics the way he wants it. <coughs> But he can play it the way he wants. Always at the no, no, no. The point is because he's trying to avoid the real issue. Mm -hmm. Where is Raila in uh, Ruto's and government? Where the real issue is. The real issue, yes. in my view, yes. is that Rigadi and Ruto have disagreed on how to rob Kenyans. Those are two <laughs> robbers in a room who've disagreed. <laughs> so they are fighting in the room on how to steal share from the, the, share the, the loot mm -hmm. that they've taken from the people of Kenya. Then now he's coming out and trying to find an avenue that the people can carry him in his selfish agenda. Because I say this, if he's genuinely speaking about governance, mm -hmm. let Rigathi call a meeting tomorrow and say, mm -hmm. my primary point of disagreement with William Ruto is that he does not listen to the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. Over 95% mm -hmm. of our people mm -hmm. have given their views on the finance bill. Correct. And they have said, we reject this excessive taxation. Let him speak it. Yes. Number two, yes. let him say, beyond the people's agenda, we are seeing the looting that is taking place in this administration. Mm -hmm. I, regarding Gashagwa, mm -hmm. I disagree. Mm -hmm. We cannot continue having this kind of kakitocracy mm -hmm. in our republic. Yeah. I reject and the following are the members of our executive who are benefiting from the theft of public resources. Mm -hmm. Number three, mm -hmm. you should say in terms of institutional reforms, what the executive is doing to weaken institutions of governance. I, regarding Gashagwa, I reject this weakening <coughs> of institutions of governance. Beyond that, yeah. Anything he's doing outside there is trying to use Raila as a scarecrow. We must reject it and tell him, no, go back to Kenya Kwanzaa where you belong. When the time comes mm -hmm. for the impeachment, mm -hmm. all Kenyans will impeach you for your fall <laughs> time that you carry. We're taking a short break. When we come back, Jamas Bigamba and uh, Zaki Nuthia will be weighing in on the issue of uh, the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. Yesterday, I think, was the day that uh, he spoke the most and said the most. We're coming back with that discussion after this short break. Stay with Inside Politics. <laughs>